Hi and welcome to the first ever video blog entry on the Financer. Uh, my name is Chris Skinner, I write the Financer regularly as those who follow the blog know and I thought we'd give this a go just to summarise the news in video format for the week and if you like it uh, maybe continue this for a few more weeks and maybe you never know for a long time to come. Uh, this week's been an intriguing week um, and the headline news is obviously Goldman Sachs being sued for fraud related to their complex wrapping up of the financial instruments related to subprime debt in collateralized debt obligations, CDOs. Uh, I've ri actually written quite a bit about CDOs and subprime debt, uh, so I can point you to the relevant entries there. But the gist of it is that the way in which they packaged up these deals, uh, the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, who regulates the American financial markets, is saying... Uh, wasn't above board. Now, bearing in mind that Goldman Sachs have defended their position throughout the last few years, with a lot of people accusing them of market manipulation, uh, of practices that are actually underhanded with their clients, uh, and they actually, as Goldman Sachs, have written a letter to defend themselves against these accusations to their shareholders just the other week. This is dramatic news. It could mean the ending of the investment banking um, and the prop trading service overall for many of the banks because of the way in which this is being handled. Um, Goldman Sachs has been the flagship of the American investment banking system. Uh, and as you know, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers have gone under, Merrill Lynch got rolled into Bank of America. So this is major news. Uh, talking of Bank of America, they reported great results this week, $3.2 billion net income. JP Morgan similarly had great results. And we did think we were getting to the stage of market stability within the banking sector. Uh, this new uh, accusation could mean that that stability goes away. Equally, in Europe, we don't really have much stability. We have the European Commission announcing at the start of this week that they would introduce a banking levy on transactions with great support across the European member states for this. By the end of the week, they retracted that and said, actually, it doesn't look likely that this will happen. Gordon Brown, meantime, the leader of the UK uh, economy for the last decade as Chancellor of uh, the UK Parliament, um, came out and said, actually, I failed in banking regulation. We didn't regulate the banks strongly enough. Uh, it's a major admission of failure in the run-up to the general election in the UK. And what it means is that we have great uncertainty in the UK. We don't know whether by the end of um, this month and then May the, May the 6th, when we have the general election, whether we'll have the same regulators in our markets. The Conservative government, if they get in, claim they will get rid of the FSA, uh, Labour say that they will give the FSA more power. So we don't know what's going to happen in the UK, Europe or America right now in terms of financial markets, financial regulation and the future of banking. All I can say is that a lot of the future of banking is wrapped up in the innovations that we see discussed in this blog regularly and no more so than this week's discussions around Hives, the social payments and social network service in the Netherlands who have introduced Facebook-style payments in partnership with Rabobank. Uh, quite a major innovation there, which I think is a flagship for others. Equally, uh, a big discussion around the alternatives to the major payment system, PayPal, in that if you go to um, Russia, you'll find Yandex, which is the equivalent of Google. Google has their Yandex money. And in China, uh, Alipay, which is related to the B2B uh, e-commerce site Alibaba, is also a major payments mechanism. So there's lots of things still happening that are innovative in banking overall. Uh, so interesting times and the end of the week many of us frustrated about flights being closed down across the UK and Europe thanks to Iceland. Uh, as we all know Iceland uh, took the money and then they give us their uh, ash. Uh, we asked for cash, they gave us ash. Um, but there you go. We'll find out uh, whether the, the uh, troubles of Iceland and the troubles of Europe's airlines get blown away and hopefully um, the troubles of the banking sector will get blown away just as quickly. Uh, so that's a review of this week. Uh, I'd be interested in your feedback around doing this and whether it's worth having a video entry each week. Um, but have a great week and uh, talk to you again next week. Bye for now.